Theo Walcott scored 108 goals in just 397 appearances. But how many of you would actually consider him a club legend? It's been close to two decades since the 16-year-old prodigy burst into the limelight with his exceptional pace and movement. Pep Guardiola once declared that you would need a pistol to stop him. Arsene Wenger compared him to the legend Thierry Henry and seven-time Ballon d'Or winner Lionel Messi described him as one of the most dangerous players he ever played against. Did you know he was once called to feature on Harry Potter? Yes, Harry Potter, but more on that later. Walcott had it all, did it all, but did he do enough to convince you to be a club legend? Theo Walcott started his early football career playing for a now disbanded team, Newbury. There, he scored more than 100 goals in his one season with the team, aged only 10 years old. He then made his move to Swindon Town and finally to Southampton, a youth system that has produced Gareth Bale, Alan Shearer, Chamberlain, Lalana, McGoldrick, among others. We aren't even that fine to Theo's career, but Nike had already seen enough star quality to prompt them to hand the 14-year-old a sponsorship deal. Serious question, where were you when you were 14 years old? Theo Walcott was signing sponsorship deals with the biggest companies in the world. I mean, let's just not get into that anyway. This was only the beginning for Walcott as more success quickly followed, helping Southampton reach the 2004-2005 FA Cup Youth Final. Yes, he might not have won the tournament, but this opened a lot of doors for the youngster at only 15 years old. A few months later, the manager at the time, Harry Redknapp, asked Theo Walcott to link up with the Southampton first team on their pre-season tour of Scotland just two weeks after leaving school. Two months into the season and it didn't take him too long to make an impact scoring after 25 minutes against Leeds. He scored again four days later away to Millwall and you guessed it, three days later he notched up another goal, this time his first home goal against Stoke. Oh, did I mention? This made him the youngest Southampton goal scorer in the process. By this time, another legendary manager had seen enough. Arsene Wenger bid for Theo Walcott and the 16-year-old joined the Gunners on 20th January 2006 for a fee of 5 million, rising to 12 million. The 2 million in bonus payments and the other 5 million paid in installments of 1 million after every 10 Premier League appearances. That was later revised to 9.1 million instead of 12 million, but that was only two years later after a few meetings. But enough of all the calculations, let's get back to the main subject. Now, obviously, that was Arsenal's last season at the iconic Highbury Stadium, but he never actually got a chance to play there, so fast forward to the 2006-2007 season. This is where we'll take our first visit to the national team before heading back to Arsenal. Now, remember between January and May, Theo Walco did not make any appearances for Arsenal, but Ericsson still picked him for the World Cup team in Germany. Yes, he went to the English team to Germany without ever making an appearance for Arsenal, one of the youngest ever players to be picked up in a World Cup squad. He ended up not playing any games at the 2006 FIFA World Cup, but I'm pretty sure he enjoyed the experience. It's not easy to play at a FIFA World Cup when your squad has the likes of Gerard, Lampard, Michael Owen, Wayne Rooney, so on and so forth. But we'll talk about the World Cup again later because it never actually worked out for him at the World Cup. He finally got his opportunity to play when Arsenal moved to the Emirates Stadium, making his Premier League debut as a substitute for Jumbach on the opening day against Aston Villa. It took him only 11 minutes to assist Gilberto Silva's goal, Arsenal's first ever Premier League goal at the Emirates Stadium. Theo Walcott assisted it. His first Arsenal goal came in the 2007 League Cup final against Chelsea, one of the many times he scored against Chelsea, but this was overshadowed by Drogba's brace, Terry's injury and a fight that saw three players sent off. So Theo Walcott's special moment was overshadowed, but that was not the only time that one of his moments were to be overshadowed. More on that later. In fact, you don't have to wait that long for it, I promise. 
During this period, he actually suffered a shoulder injury that kept him out for a period of time. But when he came back, he had one of his greatest Arsenal runs, coming in the 2007-2008 Champions League quarterfinal against Liverpool, as he went past six Liverpool players to square at the Bayo's side foot finish in the 84th minute. But somehow, we still considered two goals in the last six minutes to kill our dreams of a Champions League semi-final. Walcott overshadowed for a second time. Later that campaign, Arsene Wenger claimed that Theo Walcott had made the shift from a boy to a man, but not yet to a monster. Despite not being a monster, he changed his shirt number from 32 to 14, previously worn by the legend Thierry Henry. Apparently, he had originally wanted the number 8, but that was already taken by a certain uh, Sami Nasri. He picked up another shoulder injury in November of 2008, missing four months. After his return, he scored once again against Chelsea at Wembley, this time in an FA Cup semi-final, but you guessed it, yet again we lost after Didier Drogba scored the winning goal. Walcott overshadowed part three. Three days later, we had that incredible 4-4 draw against Liverpool where Ashavin scored four goals, but his fourth goal was basically almost all Theo Walcott's work, running almost the entire pitch to set up the chance for Ashavin, which was clinically finished. But yet again, he was overshadowed as people remember that game for Ashavin's four goals, and we didn't actually win that game because Liverpool equalized yet again in the 90th minute. If you want to check that out, I did a whole video about Ashavin, the link will be in the description. Another of his special moments arrived in 2010 when he came on as a sub while Arsenal was trailing 2-0 to a very good Barcelona side, a Pep Guardiola Barcelona side with Messi, Xavi, Ibrahimovic and many more. He ended up scoring in that match and also earning Arsenal a draw. Arsene Wenger had seen enough in the first leg to actually decide to start Theo Alcott in the second match against Barcelona. And it didn't take him too long to make an impact once again. His influence continued from the first leg as he set up Niklas Bentner's goal to give Arsenal a 3-2 aggregate lead. Finally, Theo Walcott was not going to be overshadowed this time, right? Arsenal were going to progress against a Pep Guardiola Barcelona side and everything was going to be good, right? Wrong. Up step Messi. Scoring not one, not two, not three, but four goals as Arsenal sank to a 6-3 aggregate defeat. But this time we actually had someone to blame, Demi Almunia. In the same year, despite having some incredible performances for Arsenal, he came under scrutiny for the first time after England's friendly match against Egypt. Former football player and manager Chris Waddle not hiding his frustration at all. I've never seen Theo develop. He just doesn't understand the game for me. He doesn't know where to be running, when to run inside a fullback, when to just play a 1-2. I just don't think he's got a football brain and he's going to have problems. Let's be honest, good defenders would catch him offside every time. I mean, yes, maybe a part of that was true, but he still had some incredible performances for Arsenal that campaign and everyone expected him to go to the World Cup in South Africa. But did that happen? Unfortunately not. Fabio Capello left him out of the 2010 World Cup squad, preferring Sean Wright Phillips and Aaron Lennon in his place. Remember I told you about the 2006 FIFA World Cup when he was actually picked but didn't play? I told you we were going to talk about the World Cup once again and still, we are going to visit that topic once again. I think Theo Walcott himself was more surprised that he didn't get picked for the 2010 World Cup than he was when he got picked for the 2006 World Cup. In the 2008 season, he actually did score a hat-trick against Croatia and everything looked good, but not for Fabio Capello. This came as a surprise for many, including Lionel Messi once again. In an interview, he said he was shocked and believed that Theo Walcott could have made a difference against Algeria and Germany. Capello himself admitted one year later that it was a big mistake not to pick him. Over the next couple of seasons, he consistently scored 10 plus goals. He obviously kept on scoring against Chelsea, but arguably his most successful season came in the 2012-2013 season, appearing 43 times and scoring 21 goals and assisting 16 times, 14 of those goals and 12 of those assists in the Premier League. 
He scored two hat-tricks, one against Reading in the Carabao Cup, then known as the Carling Cup in a 7-5 win, and yet again in a 7-3 game against Newcastle, this time in the Premier League, scoring three goals and assisting twice. In that game, he actually played as a striker. I mentioned striker because that is an important topic in Theo Walcott's career. Obviously, he kind of started as a striker when he was young, but as he developed, despite Chris Waddle saying he didn't develop, he played as a right quick right pacey winger, you know, he played mostly on the right side. But after that, he started talking about playing as a striker around 2011, 2012, 2013, and eventually he was given the chance, but most of the Arsenal fans did not like how he performed there. But during this season, he actually did perform well, scoring a couple of hat-tricks in that position. Between 2013 and 2015, he suffered various injuries which saw him play 27 Premier League games in the two following Premier League seasons, missing 65% of those games. But at least there was that Tottenham gesture, you know? Yeah, that was good. The 2-0 one. Just look at how frustrated the Tottenham fans are. Incredible. Unfortunately for Theo Walcott, he ended up missing yet another World Cup, this time the 2014 edition in Brazil with an injury. So this is three World Cups he could have gone to or could have played, but three World Cups that had just passed him without any games at all. The next few seasons were a roller coaster for Theo. One minute he was scoring in an FA Cup final against Aston Villa. The next he was being left out of another major tournament, this time England's Euro 2016 squad. He went on to finish his Arsenal career with 397 appearances and scoring 108 goals, assisting more than 70 times. Excluding his first couple of seasons, he missed close to 120 Premier League games, most through injury. That number would scale to around 150 games if he included the cup competitions, the European competitions. So really, we would have been looking at 150 goals and well over 100 assists. Remember I mentioned Harry Potter at the beginning of this video? Well, here we are. In the 2007 film Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Theo Walcott was due to make an appearance. Why? Because the director of the film, David Yates, is actually Theo Walcott's uncle. Now, the rest of Theo Walcott's family actually appeared in the movie, but Theo didn't because of his commitments to us. So, what's your honest opinion on Theo Walcott? Do you think he broke through a bit too early to keep it sustainable until the end of his career? Do you think he was just unlucky with the injuries? I was very glad that he went on to win a couple of FA Cups with Arsenal because I think he was pretty good for us. But in terms of being a legend, I let you guys judge. I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to see more videos like this, let me know which players you'd like to see. I've already covered the likes of Ashavin, as previously mentioned. I've covered the likes of Amalin. All the links will be in the description. I really appreciate you guys watching. Keep staying safe and I'll definitely catch up with you guys on the next Arsenal player profile.